I take it y'all are doing good tonight. Um, good. <laughs> I'm very excited to be welcoming you all to the SFLGBT Nerds Fit Queer Slam. My name is Alex and I identify as hella queer. You can use they them pronouns to refer to me. What's special about this space is that we all want to be here tonight because as queer people, we have the opportunity to form a chosen family. And I know this time of year can be difficult to navigate through. So on behalf of the San Francisco LGBT Center, I want to wish you a very happy holiday season. <laughs> happy holidays. We are here, we are queer, and we're not going anywhere. And tonight I have the honor of sharing this stage with my co-host, Kim Folks. Kin is a published poet, public speaker, activist, and educator. They're the founder and executive director of Spectrum Queer Media, an award-winning Oakland-based national LGBTQ rights organization, and they were also the 2017 San Francisco Pride Grand Marshal. Please welcome to the stage, Kin Folks! Dance, honey. Oh, I love that. Can we have theme music every single time? Can we give it up for our DJ? Yeah. 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 Okay, so we're gonna have to work on that, folks. Yeah. We're, gonna, oh, yeah. we're gonna give a little oil tonight. So, um, a queer slam. You might be asking yourself, what is a queer slam? What is that about? Um, it sounds very erotic, actually, but it's not. <laughs> it's not. It, it can be pleasurable for the people who are stepping up here. What they're doing is they're sharing their love. And so what we're going to do in response is scream and hoot and holler like Rihanna's up here, because that's my personal favorite. <laughs> you, you can think about whoever you want to, but Rihanna's really up here right now. So I need to go over the rules. And it's really important because the Queer Slam becomes a slam because of the rules. Number one, poets, when you come up here, understand that we have some wonderful judges. Will our judges stand up tonight? Who are judges? Yes, stand. Give some love to our judges. You, you can't give them any favors. You can't give candy to them as you're passing by. They're not going to look at you until you hit the stage. And when you hit the stage, know that they're scoring you on a score from one to four in each of five categories. There's physical presence and voice and articulation, dramatic appropriateness. Oh. <laughs> We're always dramatically appropriate. So, Evidence, that's a, that's a five across the board, and five isn't even one of the scores. Evidence of understanding and overall performance. So of course you can sing, you can act out, you can act out, that's funny. Inflections, accents, facial expressions, all of that. You cannot come up here with a drummer and a band. You can use percussion with your body, though. Um, yeah, something's about to happen tonight. I can see you're ready for it, okay. Um, you must perform your original work. And I know for some people that's like, oh, whatever. We didn't say that one time, and what had happened was someone came up here and they did a fabulous job of reciting someone else's work. Um, you can't use props. So um, you can't come up with a banner or anything like that. You can't use a loop machine, blah, 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 blah. So the most important thing for most folks when they step up here is, how much time do I have? You have five minutes. Five minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is a lot. I caution you, please try to do it in four, because at the four minute mark, our DJs are gonna start playing a little something. Uh, uh, uh. Hey! Oh, watch out, so maybe I'll dance when that comes on too. And what I would like you to do is pay attention to that, because we're gonna give you 60 seconds to wrap up, and when it hits that five minute mark, I will come out here, I will dance right up on stage, and I will say, I love you very much. Moving right on. <laughs> That's called a chop. So I would like to know if there are any people who wanted to sign up. Are we full? Nope, we're okay. not. Okay. So come to me if you want to register at the last minute. 
And why would you want to show up impromptu and just share some poetry? Because you could win some money. I'm just saying, who could use some money? I could use some money. Anyone who could use some money know that there are three opportunities for you to gain some money. So if you are a poet, if you're a budding poet, if you have a haiku, if you're sitting here and you think, oh, I have some thoughts, bring it up here, but do it in how many minutes? Four. That's good. Some people said four. I love you. The folks that said four, you're paying attention. So make sure that you see Alex, because we really would like to see some more poets share their pieces tonight. And know that it's all, it's all love. I know that there's the competition for the money, but you all are valuable to us. So give it up for yourselves. All right, poets. So I'm going to read just the order um, that y'all are going to come up on stage and perform. Um, but before you come on stage, I'm going to read your bio and introduce your lovely selves to the audience. So in this order for the first round, we're going to have Lulu Rosa Murata, number one, number two. We're gonna have Reba, number three. We're gonna have Quinn, number four. We're gonna have Daphne, number five. We're gonna have Bobby Kindred. If you, if any, we have any drop-in tonight, please see me like right, right, right now so I can add you on. Um, so yeah, that's the order. And we shall move on in just a second. Okay, so our first poet this evening is gonna be Lulu Rosa Murata. She's a trans woman Distinguished literary and journalist, journalistic career, including 10 years as a staff writer for the San Francisco Chronicle. She's an author of 33 books in eight languages, including poetry, history, and translation. Please give the warmest welcome to Lulu Rosa Murata. <laughs> something you've probably never heard of before. I'm a trained Mayanologist. I'm going to read a poem about an experience I had with a Mayan person. But first I want to say that the young woman who died on the front of the border was a catchy speaker from Guatemala. And um, Trump's police said that her father uh, said she was sick. And CNN asked, uh, how did he say that? And the Trumpy said, well, he told me. And the CNN reporter asked him, in what language? And the Trumpy didn't answer. And he said, she and her father don't speak Spanish or English. So I'm going to read a series of questions which were addressed to her. To Jacqueline Call, my daughter, Mashi, Bishi, Tush, Bish. Bashkin, Bashora, Bashtain, Makamak, Haitul, Matesh, Mateni. Who, what, where, how, what day, what hour, why, which, how many, never, not me. This poem is called Esta Noche. It's about a bar that used to be in the mission. It's about a photo of two um, girls from the bar sharing lipstick. The beautiful man at 17th and Mission speaks in mind into his brand new smartphone. I recognize the words as he turns away. From many lives back, 50 years ago, 
when I dressed as a man in Rome, south of the border. He turns back and I see hair colored midnight. I see his deep green eyes, unbroken nose, full lips and white teeth, a stereotype of the noble Indian man I suddenly want as he looks me up and down, appraising me. He speaks in Spanish, quieres acompañarme? I show him my lipstick, red as I apply it, watching him watch me. I hand him a sugared fig, there in the corner in my tranny pride. Then he takes my hand and hails a cab. His room is tiny, just a bed and TV, and a tiny refrigerator. He offers a beer. We sit on the bed, and his kiss is electric. We lie back, and his arms fall on my shoulders. He hugs me, and I'm happy to be his girl. His name is Eric Balon, as he says, a jaguar. Yes, he speaks enough English to say his name. He's an immigrant straight from Yucatan and works in a restaurant, living on tips alone. He's Christian, he tells me, but indigenous. I pull his knees up and over my shoulders. I give him head, watching his tender eyes. His cock is long, dark, and uncut. He says, I like your mouth. And he gasps. I'm vigilant as the jaguar spreads. I'm finishing down my throat, nearly choking me. I keep my mouth around his stony root and continue during a long mile age. I dream of ancient gods armed with smartphones and revenge on all injustice he may suffer. I call him my rebel and he shines with pride. We keep his bed warm until the dawn. Then he has to leave and I make him impatient with my girly ways, brushing platinum hair. I'm 70 now, I'm the goddess of time. Outside, identities melt in the heat. Borders, there are no borders. writing feminist and queer poetry for 30 years, especially Midrash, which, which is an ancient way of retelling stories in the Torah. She has, she has really been enjoying how connecting with the slam has inspired more and new poetry writing. Please give a warm welcome for Reba. choose what to bring, he didn't take anything of his own, just his little brother's stuffed frog. When they had us all lay down on a cement slab and said, it's going to pass over us, cover yourselves, people screamed and sang and cried. And he just trembled and held my hand as we said the Lord's Prayer together and said, I'm glad my little brother doesn't have to go through this. Every day, is Thanksgiving for us now. Frogs can live on land and in water, but can they live with us? Our chemicals disrupt their sex organs. No one has croaked to me the transgender frog movement, but I will respectfully join. Oh, frogs, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Cast out from paradise the entrance to the garden guarded by an angel with a flaming sword. Deliver us from evil on earth as in heaven. People asked my Ruby if she was afraid she wasn't going to go to heaven. She just smiled and invited them in, sat them down and said, all the heaven I need is right here with my children and grandchildren. 
Heaven is in how we remember the good deeds of my mother and father. They looked at each other and said, there's nothing for us to do here. Rumi, or was it my Bobi, quotes the Hadith, paradise is at the feet of mothers. Hafiz says it happens all the time in heaven, that men and men who are lovers, and women and women who see each other's light, ask, how can I be more loving? How can I be more kind? Rest in peace, Paradise, California. Rest in power. Say her name. Say her name, Paradise. May her memory be a blessing. Oh, Paradise, you are part of us now. On days we don't wear a mask, we are breathing you in. survive. Their vision is to empower folks who feel good in their skin and set an example for other non-conforming folks. Please give a warm welcome to Quinn. Hello, beautiful people. <laughs> so my story begins in St. Louis, Missouri, where I was born and raised. I was born into a family of an emotionally abusive father who is narcissistic, also physically abusive. My mother has been deeply depressed for the majority of my life, being married to such a man, and has been emotionally absent. My sister, also a victim of this abuse, took a lot of her stuff out on me. Um, I grew up trying to survive in a home where I didn't feel safe. I learned to make myself as small as possible, to people please, um, to diffuse the tension, the violence, the anger in my house. I finally came out as queer when I was 21 years old. My parents were accepting of this on paper. Their behavior and their attitude is very different. Um, they're avid Trump supporters. And I have all of these memories, like my sister was able to bring her boyfriends, like no big deal to Thanksgiving, but my romantic life was none of anybody's business. So I ended up in a codependent relationship with my first female love, where I overcompensated my femininity to affirm her masculinity. And my entire life I have learned to repress my true self, to tend to other people's needs before my own. When I graduated college, I became an alcoholic. I would get blackout drunk and use social settings as an excuse to like hang out, whatever, like it was cool. There was this feeling in the pit of my stomach though, and after a year of just too much too many unremembered nights, I couldn't take it anymore. I felt empty and depressed, just deeply depressed. I hit a low and stopped drinking alcohol. I'm actually a year sober this month. Um, unfortunately, I replaced alcohol with cannabis. <laughs> so this month, I had stopped using cannabis as well. <laughs> took quite a while. Um, as soon as I stopped all the substance abuse, all of a sudden I came out as transgender and shaved my head and looking in the mirror, I never felt more like myself ever in my life. And in many ways, I feel like life is just beginning. Like there's all of these things that I'm reclaiming, like dancing, um, like shopping for clothes that used to give me a lot of anxiety. And I was like, oh, that sucks. And now I'm, I feel like I'm rediscovering life. Um, so, life coaching has helped me really to get in touch with myself and to kind of start this series of transformation and I quit my job in St. Louis where I found myself being a martyr 
um, my box, my boss was just horribly, uh, like the epitome of toxic masculinity, and I was just taking the bullet and protecting all my teammates, and I quit. Um, I'm now life coaching, and I'm, I'm serving the trans and queer community, and I want to provide the same access to opportunity and to possibility that life coaching has provided me. Um, side note, I just heard testosterone a couple days ago, I'm very excited. <laughs> Our next performer is going to be Daphne. She's a local actress, writer, and software engineer. Please give a warm welcome to Daphne. This is whack. By me? Take off your clothes and put your hands against that wall, he said. It wasn't the first time my father told me to take off my clothes, but this time was different. This time my mom was seated on the sofa, and so surely this wouldn't be another rape. Not in front of her. I saw him reach for his belt, though, and for a moment I thought maybe it wouldn't matter to him. But when I looked up and saw that pure, fiery rage in his eyes, I feared my father in that moment like I'd never had before. My mind went blank and my legs were jelly and my stomach turned and my bladder loosened. Take off your clothes and put your hands against that wall. My dad was a guy's guy, all muscles and the stink of beer and liquor. He climbed trees for a living. He called himself a tree surgeon, but he was really all muscle and booze and brains and charm. He was a flirt and women loved him. He was in love, and guys loved him. He was a monster, and I loved him. Each strike of the belt was like a thousand rattlesnakes chewing a line across my skin. They came in a fury, a flurry, a frenzy, whack, 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 whiff. There's nothing quite like the bittersweet relief of a whiff, a moment of sweet respite which belied the angry barrage of wax which followed. A whiff was an insult to him, and after such an insult, his rage grew, and he hit me so hard with his belt, it was like he was a, a lumberjack trying to chop through his own child. It was as though he wanted to cut me in half with a strip of leather as his axe. My dad climbed trees for a living. He called himself a tree surgeon. Stand still, he bellowed, oh, stand still. Sure, sure I will, I surely tried, if only to avoid angering him further, but I'll tell you this. The truest, most certain thing I know in this life is that it is nearly impossible to stand still while someone rips the skin from your legs and your butt and your back with a leather belt. <laughs> stand still. Whack. Did you take the money? Whack. Oh, what money? I'd love to tell you what I was being accused of, but I don't know. Even as I stand before you today, I don't know. All I knew was pain and shame and confusion and humiliation. Stand still, whack! Did you take the money, whack? No, daddy, no, I didn't, whack! No, daddy, I didn't, whack! Stand still, whack! Did you take the money, whack? No, daddy, whack! No, daddy, I didn't, whack! How long did it take for me to break? How long was I stood against that wall, naked, shivering, hurting, terrified? How many times did my mother have to watch my father strike me? Was it a minute? An hour? A week? It was an eternity. It was a lifetime. It was much of my lifetime. Stand still, whack! Did you take the money, whack? No, daddy, whack! No, daddy, I didn't, whack! Stand still, whack! Did you take the money, whack? Yes! 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 I lied. It was me. I took the money. I'm sorry, Daddy. I felt myself break. I felt something inside of me peel off and fall away. And I knew in that moment I could be broken. I knew I would lie to save myself. I knew I would lie to literally save my own skin. I felt selfish and sad 
and small and insignificant. I was 15 years old. Get out of my sight, he said, his eyes filled with disdain. I looked at my mom, shame and sorrow pouring down my face. Don't look at me, she growled. You did this to yourself. A few days later, my father told me that whatever money he thought I'd stolen out of some random neighbor's toolbox had been found. And I was punished again for lying to him. For lying to him. And in that moment, oh, in that moment, I found something new. My own righteous anger, my own sense of justice and of injustice. And I found forgiveness for me and for my father. Take off your clothes and put your hands against that wall. Well, I'll tell you something. I don't stand against walls anymore. I knock them down. because there are multiple energetic beings that exist within them and each must be honored. Storytelling is how they honor the wounds within themselves that still gape and how they invoke the spirit of their ancestors' tongue when they share communally and they deeply believe in the power of storytelling to hear the inner child, to heal the inner child. They have just published their first book, This Boy and Body, Narratives of a Queer Black Boy and the Waters That Carry Them, a collection of poetry and prose. Please give it up for Bobby Kindred. children's book, so here we go. I feel the flesh of Africa dancing on my head, and her polyrhythmic body articulation is ever blooming. I once didn't like the sub-Saharan goddess up there, so I told her, stop dancing. Your movement is not welcome. Your driving body is the reason that my hair won't relax. And each time I spoke, she responded with wordless music. I am not amused by this frequent movement that's causing my hair to tangle and kink, and you make me ugly with the dark melanin pigment trailing at the tracks of your feet, and you make my blonde hair dirty before the boys could ever notice how pretty I could be, because who would want a white woman with a slave dancing on top of her head anyway? I stare at her in the mirror throwing salty glares. Racist diction assaulting her every being so she would no longer find strength to dance her dance. Like the white master beat her black skin till her body laid flat on a thistle cotton field. I plastered the African lens of my hair with chemical remedy to hide all my black insecurities so I would appear to be more mixed race. No, not as good as white, but hell, even mulatto was all right because at least it looked like I bared the blood of beauty. But after that six feet chemical remedy faded, Africa again rose from my scalp as my roots grew in. Fiercely, she once again began to dance her dance and the endless thuds booming from the bongos caused her body to drive more quickly, rapidly, entangling my hair with her clumsy ass feet. If you must be up there, can you at least sit quietly? Because who would want a white woman with a slave wreaking havoc on the top of her head? I was ashamed of her, because how dare she be so deeply pigmented and happy all at once. Despite every effort to rape Africa of her beauty, through trying to tame and restrain her through white chemical cruelty, she had her own agenda. There was no stopping her sways and kicks and bold and beautiful radiance, and she set me free. And I found comfort in Africa because she was there for me when I was given the rude awakening that I am black and there was no purpose to conforming to a community who oppressed my people in the first place. She grew on me. And now her dance is the impetus behind my poetry. She is my contemplation, the rhythmic wonders bleeding out on my blank pages. Her melanin is my muse, and her dance is an amalgamation of culture, strength, struggle, and resilience. So 
I embrace this melanin lace ancestry, midnight essence, dawn dew presence wash over me every day, looking at my queen in the mirror, jiving, moving, unstoppable. I let my roots speak to me, and I will forever be the person who dances with Africa on the top of their head. very brave drop-in who goes by the name of M. M, where are you? Please welcome M to the stage. I have never done this before. This is exciting. I have two poems. Uh, the first one is called I hate social media. <laughs> the, oh, there's two rounds. I didn't know that either. <sighs> there is no there, there, where tearing bears a whiff of fairest clarity, but shares beget the wit of plainest fame, where there is blame and spreading shame. Blame and and spreading sh shame and spreading shame and spreading shame. There's no there there. Thank you. carrying three children on your back, the world on your shoulders, dead babies in your belly, and still, you kept moving and still to strap on heels like the black god you are. How'd you do it? I'm envious. You are able to exist black and woman with a certain grace I am not old enough to achieve yet. This is the most painful conversation I will ever have with a woman who will have my heart, but what will you do when they take my body and make carcass of it? A decaying thing with no longer a fast mouth and loud skin. I was a dead girl before you birthed me into this world. You gave birth to a body that was dead long before you birthed it, and now I am being hunted down by white pigs in blue suits. By white suits while holy crosses etched in gold, sending me back to where I came from. So, Mom, have you already been preparing to see my skull cracked open? You must have known our black asses was not welcome here. Will the images of how your child was brutally shot, killed, shock you? Or have you already been preparing for that possibility? What will you do? When the news headline says, woman killed by mentally ill man instead of girl murdered by state-sanctioned violence, Pulse nightclub was shot up. Queer colored bodies heaved their last breath on the dance floor, and you call me worried, asking me not to go to Pride this year. And like the headstrong child I've always been, I told you I'm still going. And when I said those words, did you start planning my funeral? Did you imagine my bullet riddled body covered in carnations? Did you know that was my favorite flower? What will you do when my murderer is called a martyr? 
said he did it in the name of religion, in the name of me not complying to a cop's order, in the name of me resisting my rapist. What will you do when they tell you his future matters more than mine, when they reduce my story to a hate crime, when it really was a genocide bomb? Oh. These are things you and I must think about. I used to wish I could closet my blackness like I closeted my queerness. I guess for a black person, being in a coffin is the closest thing to being in a closet. When they tell you I should have kept my mouth shut, but you remind them, mouth shut, hands up, unarmed, I can still kiss the mouth of a barrel, so please, still kiss me to sleep and tell me that you love me. The world is breaking me. But I have powerful ancestors in the arms of you. And right now, that's all I need to carry me. of the creek running under my dreams, I renounce the chanting to tuck in nightly with the creek, full, consistent, winter-fed, abundant, asking nothing at capacity, sound of the creek running under my dreams. I ask my teacher for a practice to love my meth-addled neighbor whirring past at 4 a.m. My teacher says, move, then you can love your neighbor from there sound of the creek running under my dreams. Here, blessed quiet, serenity, awash in water, mabsuta, delighting in the rain. Mani wichoni, water is life. Sound of the creek running under my dreams. In the morning, while everyone else packs, not ready to let her go yet, I gather her in my arms joyfully and have one last, sensuous, perfect, flowing, bubbling, gurgling, blissful date with the beauty of my creek. Summers. In 1965, I was 17, a cute little kid in a sex-obsessed scene. In girly clothes, I felt like a queen. It made me feel whole and so serene. I looked in the mirror, and what did I see? A cute hippie chick that happened to be me. Panties and bra, and the name Honeybee made me so pretty, so let me be free. April is the cruelest month, so wrote T.S. Eliot. Summer is the cruelest time for a tranny with big tits wearing a long coat in the heat. It recalls the mental shame worn by my Jewish forebears in Inquisition Spain. I walk the street of shadows that begins in my SRO room and leads to the public library. Powell Street with neglected deemed some and shabby herbal clinics. 
but usually safe because there's nobody to threaten me with looks and insults. Hello, I'm trans pussy. I'm the sluttiest ever. I'm trans pussy, shot up with estrogen. I'm trans pussy, let me suck your cock. I'm trans pussy, in the toilet, your car, the alley, in public. I'm trans pussy, tell me you'll butt fuck me hard. I'm trans pussy, I widen my crack with a plug. I'm tested and clean, and testosterone suppressors assure when I come, you'll barely notice it. I'm trans pussy. I'll giggle as you kill me. I am grateful for this body. 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 I'm 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 grateful. I'm grateful for this body. I'm grateful for this body. I'm grateful for this body. I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for this body. I'm grateful for this body. I'm grateful for this body. I'm grateful. I am grateful for this body. I'm 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 grateful for your gratefulness for this body. emergence as one, the process of coming into view or becoming exposed after being concealed. Two, the process of coming into being or of becoming 
important or prominent. Additionally, in philosophy, systems theory, science, and art, emergence is a process whereby larger entities, patterns, and regularities arise through interactions among smaller or simpler entities that themselves do not exhibit such properties. Simply put, that which emerges becomes greater than the sum of its parts. I love this concept. It so fully encapsulates what coming out means to me. It isn't just becoming visible, it's more than coming into being. My entire existence has become greater than the fact that I do exist. Emerging doesn't happen in isolation. By definition, it must impact other systems, requiring them to exhibit properties they do not exhibit outside the system. My entire network of friends has begun to emerge, to become greater than we were without each other. After I came out, some people responded by saying, I don't judge. I never liked that to begin with. We all judge. It's how we know not to enter dark alleys at 3.30 in the morning or wrestle lions naked in the jungle or when a relationship is unsafe or unhealthy. I didn't ask to be excluded from your judgment. I didn't ask to be ignored. I am asking for your judgment and for your acceptance. I am standing before you, asking to be loved for who I am. I want you to judge, and I want to be found worthy and loved. Before I accepted my identity and made it known publicly, I read a lot. I remember <laughs> reading that those who know us transition with us. They must, in a way, mourn the passing of the person they knew. They have to learn new ways of interacting with us. My friends have had to transition with me to bear the burden of questions, of disapproving comments and stares and explanations. They have taught me how to accept myself, to live with grace, to be proud and authentic. My friends have given me the greatest gift a soul can offer another. They help me find myself. My friends helped me emerge. And together, my friends, you and I are all something entirely fucking magical. give it up for them. Every single one of them. I don't envy the judges. I don't. That was, it, was, it was hard. It was hard to me. I did hear that you take bribes, though. So, just saying. Yeah, that's right. I told you after the fact. All right, so why don't we start with third place tonight. In third place, I was going to make something up, and I figured, I don't want to get beaten up on the way to my car. Are you serious? Sorry, am I right? Our third place winner this evening is Reba. Please make sure you
give it up for Bobby Kendrick. <laughs> All the folks who make this land possible. Oh, shit. <laughs> 